Welcome to tutorial 4. Today we're going to be working with the gardener tool and I've got an area field uh, and a folder called vegetation and then I've got a garden layer. So go ahead and make this uh, directory structure. Also make a layer for your path areas. Drop one of those onto your terrain. So once you've got all that set up we'll go over here to the gardener tool and the first thing you want to do is type in uh, zero blank zero blank and then hit save so you do this the very first time because it saves you a clean slate that will always sit at the very top of your list anytime you open up RedKit so the next thing is I'm going to name what I'm working on I'm going to call it small forest save that and I'm going to add some plants in so go to your asset browser go down to environment levels vegetation and trees and I'm going to go with this first pine tree right here. Now we just click in the uh, null space that's next to object mesh and then we hit the green arrow. So that drops it straight in there. So now we'll select number two. Go down to... Uh, I'm going to go down a little ways here. There it is. Looking for that Cedrus tree. So just hit that space and then green arrow. And... I'm going to put a mushroom in here. But the mushroom is really small, so if I decide that I don't want that, I can just select it, select its number, whichever one, and then hit this uh, gray box next to the green arrow. And you see it deletes it from my kit. It does not delete it from the map. So the, the mesh remains on the map. So let's replace that with a tree. Since this is called small forest, that's probably what I should be putting into this kit. So I'm going to go with this big tree with the roots. Perfect. Let's zoom back out. We'll work from a distance because we can see these trees. And you can just start clicking on the map wherever you feel like you want a tree. You can see it automatically randomizes the rotation. So if I put these all in a row, they're each one going to look individual. They're going to look different. And I can drop in some of these guys. That doesn't look very random because I, I really wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but um, you can also go with uh, the random stamp tool. So that will just pick a different tree or a different number um, at random. Which helps you out with making a more random look to it, which is more natural looking. So I'll deselect that tool, I'll go over here to the eraser. If I don't like a tree, I can just hold down the eraser and move it over the base of the tree and it will delete it for me. Let's go ahead and save our preset because we're going to close the active tool. The nice thing about this tool is that you can come down here and select individual trees and make them look however you like. You can scale them up and the collision mesh will automatically scale up in proportion to the size. So, I mean, it's, it's the same mesh, basically. It's just inside of that. And now I've got a very large cedar tree that looks really nice and has full collision all the way around it. But it actually, it does not have collision yet because I have not turned it on. So when you have the mesh selected, just right click in the viewport and click convert meshes to static meshes. So that tree now has has collision. If you want to do more than one tree at a time, we can simply go up here to our scene tool. We can select all of the meshes. So I'm going to scroll down. I've got that top one selected and I'm going to shift click the bottom one. And then I'll right click out here and say convert meshes to static meshes. And now they all have collision. So in order to experience this, we need to go to our Tools menu, Navigation Mesh, Select All, and then we are doing this, uh, this regeneration of the Nav Mesh. E and Q go straight up and down. So you can go straight down to the map and we'll play it. So these can all be bumped into now. So the ones with the roots have a very odd looking collision mesh. 
it's only down here on the very inside that you'll actually bump into it. Click exit and go back to the asset browser and we'll double click the mesh. So right now this mesh has 450 convex faces so we're in the mesh editor and we can show collision that'll show us what it looks like and none of those roots are covered right now it's it's a uh, it's a custom mesh that CD project has built you can also click something simple like a box which is just a massive box to cover the whole thing you can create a convex which is a very rough shape sometimes it's better than other times um, let's try a few more and just see what it what it generates if anything works for us doesn't look like it this is going to be very strongly not recommended but we'll just show it 25,000 faces so that's way too heavy for gameplay we're just going to have to uh, go back to the basic actually I don't think that I can go back to the basic so let's see what happens oh man I might have just fallen off that tree that's not good okay there we go so if you just load back up the red kit it'll pop back in as normal I didn't hit save if you hit save it might it might be messed up forever so um, let's give an example of one that that uh, you know has no collision to begin with we'll just create convex show that so there we go since it has branches out here it just tapers straight down to almost a point that means the player's head will hit right about there it'll almost look right the only other thing that I need to show you how to do is if you want these to have collision before you put them in all of these that I'm clicking right now have no collision I can simply double click right there add collisions and now they will have it so these four on the inside will have collision if I want to keep it that way I need to hit save preset and now anytime I load up this preset they'll have collision I can also do the same thing with cast shadows if you hit true all of the trees that you put in will have shadows but they will also have uh, an added performance hit for the player so be aware that shadows cost you um, system resources so we'll save that these two will be true from now on so that's it for the gardener tool it's a very basic tool it's very useful for small scale detailing of areas it's not as good for large swaths of land that's what the vegetation tool is for it's called painting vegetation because you're actually going to be doing uh, coverage over large areas of land very quickly so we will deal with that in the next tutorial. Have fun modding and thanks for watching.